Hi there. Today we're going to talk about the camera selector plugins for Lightwave. Let's say, uh, let me load up a scene I just made real quickly. Here we go. I have two null objects in this scene right next to each other. They just have an item shape on so we can see what's going on. So there's two nulls and there are two cameras. We have camera A and camera B. Let me... Go to the Utilities tab, and down here under Plugins, we have Master Plugins. I'm going to click on Master Plugins, and here we have our Master Plugins box. Uh, if we come down, if we click on the pop-up menu, we can select our Master Plugins we want to use, and we'll see about the third one down. We have Camera Selector with a space in the name, and Camera Selector without a space in the name. Okay, so what's the deal with these two? Well, they pretty much do the same thing. If you select Camera Selector it says universal camera selector. If you select camera selector, it says selects camera for rendering at frame X. The way this works, these both work the same way as far as the, the interface goes. Let's go to camera A, or camera view. So on camera A, first of all, we'll just double click on this. This opens up our panel. We're just gonna click add, and that creates our camera at key zero. If we scroll over here to say frame 50 and switch our camera to B and click add, well now our camera is switching the camera B at frame 50. So as we uh, scroll along here it uh, and get to frame 50, it automatically switches camera. And let's switch back to camera A. I don't know what frame I'm on now. I don't really care. Camera A, add on 82. Okay, so we go ABA. So here we have our camera switching back and forth automatically for us. Um, we have this checkbox up here, Enable Dynamic Preview. If you are editing your object and you don't want switching the camera, because what happens is you might have your object selected, but when you scroll, it'll automatically switch to the next camera. So now your camera is selected and not the object yet selected. So if you dis disable the Enable Dynamic Preview, you won't have that problem. Your camera view won't change, but the thing it selected also will not change. Okay, so there's this one. And let's look at the other one. So let's clear this, 0, 50, 82. So, remove. Okay, now let's look at the other one. Uh, camera selector without the space in the name. It says selects camera for rendering at frame X. Okay, let's click on double click on this, and that opens up the panel. Same buttons, except we don't have a clear button down here. Um, so camera A, click Add, frame 50, camera B. You notice our list looks different. We have, you know, this the, the layout of the list looks different. Okay, so it's pretty much the same, though. They do the same thing. They both work. <laughs> um, I don't know what the difference between them is exactly, other than there are some significant differences under the hood. So let me open up my uh, Notepad++. I have a couple of scenes. Yeah, we can close that one. We have a couple of scenes. We have Camera Selector. This is the one with the space in the name, and this is the one without the space in the name. And if we look in our actual scene, you can see we have plug-in master handler camera selector then it has like these sets of numbers here this one zero three these are probably I'm not sure what those go to but then we have zero and then camera a so it's switching the camera a on frame zero then we have 50 and it's switching the camera B on frame 50 and then again hundred it's switching the camera a this is not the scene I just set up so these numbers aren't gonna match what we did in the the viewport a second ago um, so that's what this one looks like under the hood. Now if you go to the one with the space in the name, you can see it says plug in master handler camera selector and it gives me this whole file path. I don't know if that's common, but I tried it with my standard configs setup and I tried it with the default config setup without rerouting the configs and it still showed up with this full file path. And here you have a couple of numbers Again, I don't know exactly what they go to. Presumably one is enable the uh, 
preview. Uh, but we have 0, and then this number here, and then 50, and then this number here, and then 90, and this number here. These numbers are these cor these numbers correspond to I guess the item number of the camera in the scene. So it's switching to these cameras. It's doing essentially the same thing. Again, I don't necessarily know why you would want to use one over the other, except that I found that in LightWave 11.5 on my system might be different on yours. If you use the one with the space in the name and you try to load the scene on a Mac, like if you're starting it on a PC and you try loading it on a Mac, it, it's crashing LightWave 11.5 upon loading, whereas the, uh, the one without the space in the name does not have that problem. And oddly enough, I can open up this scene in 11.0.3. So it's it just something that got added to 11.5. It's lovely when they add bugs. I know they didn't add it, but I sent a bug report in. Hopefully they'll get it fixed. So that's basically the quick overview of the LightWave camera selector. I did a project with this a long time ago where I actually rendered out OpenGL previews of of a race, all the different camera angles, and then I took in the final cut and did a multi-camera edit, and then I took the, the frame, the cuts that I did in the final cut, and I just kind of transcribed them into the, the camera selector here and just was able to render the entire race in one go. And uh, it was worked pretty well. So um, if you like this uh, kind of stuff where you're talking about LightWave and showing techniques in different parts of the program. Uh, subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified whenever I post something about graphics. And also uh, check out the stuff that we have for sale at liberty3d.com. Great tutorials and plugins. And thanks for watching. Talk to you later.